Hey guys, it's Shannon. I have another furniture makeover for you today. If you missed my most recent last one, it was our TV cabinet, which is right back here, but I will insert that video link down in the description box below so you can check that out after this video and see how that started and how I turn it into what it looks like today. It was a huge transformation. So this one I'm going to give a chalk paint finish to and I'm gonna walk you through all the steps and show you the before and after. So let's get started. All right, so I already showed you the before and I have it all pulled apart. I showed you how I cleaned it all. And I'm gonna be using this chalk paint Waverly in white, which is the same color as that. And I want everything to flow nicely, so that's why I went with that again. However, the difference between the TV cabinet and the end tables here is I used a foam paintbrush, exactly this, like this for that and it took four coats of paint and honestly i probably could have even done five coats of paint and somebody on that video had mentioned this set that they had purchased on amazon and highly recommended so i went on amazon and purchased them now this is not the first time i've used this i tested this out and i did a couple wood signs with it and it definitely has lots better coverage than a foam paintbrush. So I will link this down in the description box below. I have it in my Amazon favorite store. And when you go in my store, it is in my craft supplies favorites. But this set comes with this big brush, two smaller brushes, a sanding block, soap to clean your brushes with. It has um, gloves if you need them. It comes with a spatula and also a bag to keep all of it in and together. So if you'd like to check that out, I do recommend this. I'm excited though. This is the first time I'm going to be using this brush on furniture. So at the end of this video, I will give a better review. I did pay full price for this. This is not sponsored in any way. But if it is something that will help somebody else, then I am all for helping out and giving my review. All right, so let's go ahead and start painting.
Here is a look at the first coat and I am loving it. The brush makes it so much faster, first of all, because it's bigger and it holds more paint. So it's just going on a lot faster. Ooh, I gotta get that right there. Um, the one thing I don't necessarily like so much about it is the brush strokes. I feel like you get much more of a smooth finish with the paint with the foam paint brush, but maybe it will just kind of smooth over as it dries and after I add, I'm probably gonna do at least three coats. This is just one, we'll see how two goes. But yeah, really good coverage and it goes really quickly with that big natural bristle paintbrush. All right, so I am very, very happy after two coats. I probably could just leave it, but I think I am gonna go ahead and do one more coat just to make sure I have it completely, completely covered. And then I just realized that I'm gonna put new hardware, um, which will actually match the hardware from that cabinet. And I need to fill this hole right there because I'm gonna put two hole, add two new holes for the new hardware on there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and throw a little bit of this speckle into that hole and let it dry, sand it. And then I will add that third coat of paint over top of that and hopefully that'll be enough to cover that little spot right there. All right, so I'm back. It is the next day now. I did do three coats of the chalk paint on the end table. So I let it sit overnight so it could cure because I want to add a stencil to the top of this. So now that the table is getting cured, I can get back to work on it. All right, so here's a look at the end table with three coats of paint, like I said, and it definitely covered really, really well with that paintbrush. So I am really loving that and it does leave a brush stroke mark. So let me see if the camera will get it. So I'm not fond of that, but if you're going for the farmhouse look, it's you're kind of going for a tattered look anyway, something that's not super perfect. So, you know, if you like a smooth finish, I would suggest using maybe a bigger foam paint brush so it covers a little bit better, but you're still gonna have to do multiple coats to get a white chalk paint to cover a dark stained wood. And now, if you saw my before picture, I had a table runner on the top of this because the top of the uh, end table was so scratched up. So I just needed something to cover that up. And I actually really like the idea of it. So I want to give this a subtle green sack print to the top. And I actually went on Instagram and I had designed a couple different green sack designs on my Silhouette Cameo and let you guys pick which one um, you liked the best. So you guys chose this one. If you don't follow me over on Instagram, you can find me at The Daily DIYer and I'll link that in the description box below too. So you can get involved and interact with me that way if you like. So I'll show you some of the process of how I made this, but this is Oracle uh, brand stencil material, Aura Mask number 813, and I love this stuff for stenciling with. I'm also going to use this flat paintbrush that came in my set. And so I wanted to test and see how well this does um, with stenciling versus this, because this is what I always, always use for stenciling. So we're just doing lots of science experiments in this tutorial, so I'll let you know how that goes too. And then as far as the color goes, I want a really subtle gray color for the paint. And if I can't find my lighter gray chalk paint that I have somewhere, I'm just gonna use this darker color, which is Elephant, and mix it with some white to tone it down a little bit.
right, so I got my stencil on here and I did put some blue tape against this edge so that my uh, pattern has a nice clean cut edge on the end. And I did find a lighter gray chalk paint that I had in my stash. It is called Silver Lining. And like I said, I'm gonna use this flat paintbrush and just stencil that paint onto here. And I'm gonna do a couple coats of that, let it dry in between before taking my stencil off. Now while that is drying, I'm gonna work on adding the new hardware to the front of the drawer, but I need to drill new holes. So I'm going to just measure, find the middle, measure out from there, drill my holes and attach it with the screws that they came with. So I am incredibly happy with the way this came out. I have like one tiny little spot right there, but that's a super easy fix. So thank you guys who helped vote on Instagram because I love it. I love it. It turned out great. And one thing I wanted to cover before I put this back together because I forgot to mention it whenever I did that video is I got a lot of questions about do I seal my furniture after I'm done painting it. And yes, of course you absolutely can. My favorite is this Polycrylic by Minwax. This is the matte finish. And the reason I love that is because it is non-yellowing and it creates a hard durable surface for you. So you're less likely to get paint chips, uh, you know, if you bump or you, you know, use your furniture roughly, you know, you're gonna be putting um, cups and things on there. So just to really give it a hard protective surface, I really suggest this. The other thing I like to use is this clear matte varnish by Waverly. It's the same chalk paint I used. And the good thing about this is you're gonna be left with the same kind of chalky finish. So if you like the chalk finish, then go with this. It's not going to be as durable, but it is giving you a protective coating. Um, for me, I'm going to go ahead and do the polyacrylic. There's going to be cups set down on this and I really want it to have a durable finish that it's not going to chip and all that. Um, so for this piece, for sure, polyacrylic for me. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is whether you use either one of these um, and you're going to be painting on a protective finish. You want to make sure your paint is completely cured. Even if it's dry, like this is pretty dry right now, um, it's not cured and hardened all the way. And what will happen is if you paint over this with a paintbrush, either one of these, it will smudge and smear. And you absolutely don't want that after you work so hard to get this nice design on there. Um, obviously, if you are just painting all over one color, you're not going to notice it so much. Um, so you're okay to do it a little bit sooner if you're not going to put a different colored design on your furniture. But if you guys have any questions about that, uh, you can leave those in the comments below. Of course, I would be happy to help you down there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this all back together finally. I'm excited to see what it looks like.
Thank you all so much for joining me for this tutorial. I love doing makeovers like this. It's fun to see the before and then the transition to the after because it's always such a huge difference. And I really am pleased with the way that it turned out. However, I am sort of concerned about the black legs. They are gorgeous. I love them. I think it really helps tie in the hardware that I added to the drawer and the black lamp and then the accents of the buffalo check that I have around the room. So I really thought it would work. However, I feel like they almost get lost back here in this corner and it looks almost like a floating drawer or tabletop. So I'm really considering purchasing some wood legs to attach to the bottom and painting those out white just so it has more of a substantial looking uh, stature in the room. But let me know down in the comments below, what would you do? Would you leave it as it is or would you update it a little? I also wanted to do a quick review on those paint brushes. I absolutely recommend them. They were great for painting the piece. I actually really did enjoy using the stencil brush to add the paint to the top for the grain sack print. So I do recommend these. I'll have a link in the description box below to my Amazon favorite store where I will have them in my craft supplies section. So if you'd like to order them, you can link over from there. And I hope that this tutorial inspired you make sure to give it a thumbs up for me you can also hit that subscribe button and join me every single Monday Wednesday and Friday where I bring you new tutorials DIYs and new inspiration hit the bell as well so that you get notified when my videos go live and I will see you all next time thanks so much for watching bye guys